Hey y'all, Darla here with Growing Tropical. Guess what? I'm not on the south side of the yard for a change. Um, for those of you who did not see the last couple of videos, I have been stuck on the south side of our property trying to get proper drip irrigation run over there. Um, and just to recap, um, I am actually um, getting ahead of it. I'm getting in front of it and I am super, super thrilled. I just have a couple of more things to critique over there. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that on film for you guys so you can see the finished product. But we've just run drip irrigation all over there and um, I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. I've tested it. It looks like it's doing it's what it's supposed to do. I just have a couple of more um, areas where I need to tap in with some risers and run them to some of the more staple plants over there. I needed to fertilize the other side and do a complete mulching and then I think we're going to be good. I have two hanging baskets that I want to go ahead and um, get planted up but I will show you guys uh, that as well. So right now I am in the front yard, our, um, our front yard. It has a way west facing um, sun so this this whole front yard it gets a lot a lot of hot sun not quite as bad as the south side as far as because it's more narrow out there and there's not a lot of like wind flow you can see I'm blowing my hair is blowing in the wind and everything it's beautiful to work in the front yard most of the time except for obviously in the dead of the summer in the heat of the day um, I don't want to be out here obviously but for the most part I love working in our front yard and what I'm going to do is I would like to um, again if you guys uh, for those of you who haven't seen my video actually it was my very first video that I did last year in 2019 <clears throat> excuse me, where I actually purchased these beautiful um, hibiscus. These are called Red Hots Hibiscus. They are um, so beautiful. I hope you guys can actually see. I'm going to actually bring the camera in a little bit so you guys can see the beautiful, beautiful color on these guys. They are just so pretty and they actually do have um, a bloom, a red bloom that is on them. I don't believe any of them are blooming right now, but they um, they do have a red bloom, and most of the time, whoops, let me get the camera set back up so you guys can see. Um, for the most part with these guys, you want to keep them in a full sun. The variegated hibiscus like this, you want to keep them in as much sun as possible because the more sun that they're in, the, the prettier the variegation on the leaf comes, the brighter and more vivid the color actually is. And like I said, they do bloom. Um, these have a pretty red bloom on them, but really and truly, they're so gorgeous that you wouldn't even really miss it if you didn't have the red blooms. Um, I was a little concerned last year when I actually put these in. They're growing under a triple, um, gosh, I'm drawing a blank, Sp not, a spindle, a, a triple spindle palm. And um, I was a little concerned that maybe because it's still a little young yet. I was afraid that maybe these would get a little too much, maybe not quite as much sun, um, but that was not the case. So far, they're getting a really, really good sun. So I think that the canopy on this, uh, this uh, palm is actually high enough, which is actually good. So I'm gonna be able to leave them here and they're gonna look absolutely beautiful. But I've let them, I, I think at the end of the year, I gave them a little nip and tuck. I can't remember if I put that on film or not. I wanna say, I can't remember, but anyway, I did give them a little bit of a nip and tuck all around and um, just brought them down a little bit just to kind of clean them up because they were getting kind of leggy and they just they were so beautiful through the whole winter they were absolutely gorgeous we did have a very very mild winter which we usually do here in south florida but now they're just getting kind of leggy and out of shape and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just go through and i'm going to just trim them down and I'll let you guys, guys kind of go along with me while i'm trimming them and then we'll come back and we'll talk um, a little bit how they look Okay, let me take you around and the, the whole circle so you guys can see just how pretty they actually look. And if you remember, they were just really kind of long and lanky or whatever. And 
I always love what they look like, the hibiscus, really almost any shrub, not all of them. There are a couple of shrubs like my Indian hawthorn when I cut them back, they're a funny shrub anyway, and they just look so bald. I don't, don't necessarily care. I always like it to get about, I know four to six weeks of growth on those, but as a rule, most of the shrubs when I trim them back, they just look so nice and clean and tight. And the hibiscus are definitely um, in, that, in that category. They look so pretty. And again, let me just take you around the camera around so you guys can see just how pretty they look. Um, they're just so compact and they're really, really bright in color. Um, let me just show you an example here of, remember when I was telling you a little bit about how I was concerned with the color of how the hibiscus would be under this canopy. Now back here, if you, if I come in a little bit, you can see that the color on this hibiscus is a little bit more muted than say, for example, out here. Okay. You can see the color is a lot more brilliant and vivid. And that is kind of what I was a little bit concerned with, but I think we're going to be okay primarily because this this particular, um, <clears throat> well, it's on the back side, of course, the sun sets to the west, and this would be more of the east side. But that's not my concern so much, um, is the canopy of this particular um, trunk of the spindle palm. If, again, I'm gonna drop a link down to my very first video showing me plant under planting these guys, these, these um, uh, hibiscus hot, um, I'm getting ahead of myself. The um, these hibiscus and um, the red hots. I couldn't get that out of my mouth, the red hot hibiscus. The, um, in that video, I talked a little bit about um, waiting until this, because it was a very scraggly palm when I first bought it. And um, I waited for a little while before I planted anything under it. And I'm really glad that I did that. But this third um, trunk that's on this spindle palm, he, while he has definitely gotten a lot healthier and larger, he's still a little bit small. So if you guys can see a little bit, if I showed you here, these fronds right here, the, these lower ones, they kind of lay in over and they create a, a little bit more of a shadowing or shade, I should say. But once that palm or this trunk, and see how what I'm saying? See how this guy is a little bit smaller than these guys? Look how fat and happy and sassy those guys are. And he's just a little, um, little less, but he was a lot worse when we first, when I first put him in. And um, he has gotten really a lot, lot healthier. He looks a lot better but as he as his trunk gets a little bit higher and that canopy gets a little higher it's going to allow more sun so i'm really not worried too much there's only two of them back here that are actually um under the shadow of this particular this particular trunk so i think we're gonna be okay i hope we are because they look so so very pretty here and um just to kind of a little bit of information if i didn't i can't remember if i said they are definitely tropical. They're hibiscus. They are, they are, the names are called um, red or red hots. They, um, the zone, they're usually, um, in these particular case, I believe these were zoned for like a nine and warmer. If you live in a zone nine, um, as long as you, if, if you get a, any kind of a freeze or a frost or anything and living in a zone nine, you just want to take care to like cover them. I don't really believe that you would lose them because I've been growing hibiscus here in a zone 10 and there was a winter, I can't remember if it was 2000, it was 2010, I want to say. Don't mark me on that for as positive, but I want to say it was like in 2010, we had a terrible, terrible winter here. and. In this particular spot where the spindle's at, I had a beautiful, beautiful Christmas uh, Christmas palm, an Adonita, and um, he was gorgeous. And we actually lost that. It's the first time that we lost anything that large because of a freeze. And it was just, it was a sustained cold that just, you know, it just took it away. And it just, it broke my heart because it, we had had it for a number of years and it just, it was very, very, that was, that's one palm that just, you can, they cannot tolerate a lot, a lot of cold at all. But anyway, with that being said, um, growing these hibiscus, generally they're, they're pretty, they're pretty tough. And I know that there um, are companies that are out there now that have kind of perfected the hibiscus. And there's a lot of super cold varieties that are out there now that even people, you know, in the cold or in the Northern States can grow the hibiscus, everything and have, you know, that tropical look in their yard as well in a zone, you know, five or six, but these guys will not grow in a zone. These are zoned for a zone nine and warmer. And again, if you live in a zone nine, you'd want to make sure to take precautions to 
to take them to cover them a little bit um, if you would get a freeze or anything but anyway they look absolutely beautiful i love um when i when i get out here and i start trimming everything down as a matter of fact the guys behind me here these hibiscus look at how gorgeous these are they're so so very pretty and they're just in such need of uh, you know of an ultimate trimming but i've got them lining the property down here and they're just absolutely beautiful look at the color on this guy just absolutely spectacular but i'm going to go ahead and just kind of give them a good you know tight hedge as well but for right now I'm pretty much hedged out. I think I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. And again, if you get an opportunity, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to try to remember to pop the first video when I first planted these hibiscus um, in the landscape. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and try to remember to put that on the bottom here of this video. So you guys can actually um, go in and take a look at that and just see how small they were. They were just little babies or whatever and just how much they've grown and how pretty they look. So you guys, um, it's been a lot of fun. I always end my videos with saying that I just absolutely love this. This is a passion of mine to get out here in the yard. It's so therapeutic and I really enjoy sharing this with you. And so if you do like this video and you wanna see more because I've got a lot of projects that I've got scheduled to do, hopefully between now and the time that it gets like super, super hot living here in South Florida. I've got a lot of projects that I really want to do um, in the next couple of months. So if you're interested in um, joining me for any of those projects, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and uh, the notification bell because you will be notified as soon as I release new videos. So you guys, until the next video, bye.